The Lowboy 2-in-1 can be equipped with a variety of options. The following scenes will demonstrate their safe use. Every low boy has a rotator with a roller platform with two casket brakes. Rollers with retracting axles can be placed in 12 positions including perpendicular to the platform which would facilitate a couch entombment. The roller platform is attached to the rotator by means of a spring-loaded quick connect. The rotator can be removed and placed in three different positions, center, end of lift, and the most popular off-center position. This position allows the operators to turn the roller platform perpendicular to the lift so that an operator can have access to the deck to prep the crypt or for entombment procedures performed perpendicular to the lift. The work center deck has key slots that secure the rotator. The head of a carriage bolt located at the bottom of the rotator is placed in the large opening of the key slot and is moved to the narrow end trapping the head. A long bolt on each side must be retracted to reposition the rotator. Care should be exercised when repositioning the rotator because the carriage bolt will scratch the stained deck and powder coated frame. The sliding deck option allows the rotator to be used at any position along the length of the deck. Unlike the fixed rotator, the sliding option allows the rotator to be repositioned after a casket is loaded on the roller platform and permits full use of its 32 locking positions. To take off the rotator from the sliding deck, you must first remove the metal stop that's located over the steering end of the lift. The casket brakes have two removable handles that adjust to the caskets and tray widths. A single brake closest to the crypt must be used when elevating a casket during an entombment procedure. Two brakes are used when transporting a casket from one location to another. When transporting a casket or doing an entombment, use the crypt front holder in addition to the casket brake to eliminate unintended casket movement. The low load height facilitates two-man casket handling when using a rotator. Rotate the roller platform perpendicular to the lift. A casket on a cart is positioned at the end of the roller platform. Operators can lift the end of the casket and place it on the roller platform. The casket can be pulled or pushed onto the roller platform until the cart reaches the lift chassis. At this point, the casket is nearing its balancing point on the roller platform and requires minimal lifting to finish the loading process. Secure the casket by using a casket brake. If the casket is to be placed in a tray, pull the cart away from the lift sufficiently to allow a tray to be placed on the cart. Elevate the lift so that the tray and cart fit below the roller platform. Release the casket brake and place end of casket in the far end of the tray. When the casket comes near the end of the roller platform, lift and place the casket in completely. To place the trade casket on the roller platform, repeat the earlier procedure. The railings are of heavy duty construction, which allows the operator to lean against them with confidence, especially when crip fronts are removed. By leaning against the rails, an operator uses less of his back and more of his arms when lifting. The six position crip front holder is a standard feature. It has two lateral positions and four vertical positions and can be mounted on the narrow and broad side of the lift. These stone holders must be secured with pins. Always depress the e-stop when you have reached the height at which you will be working to avoid unintended movement of the lift from the ground controls. The unit can be equipped with bronze powder coated single and double storage compartments for accessories. The standard lift comes equipped with all-terrain wheels and a tow bar with a removable handle. It can be towed behind a tractor at 5 miles per hour or less. Elevate the platform a few inches on a 5 and 6 high lift when moving to avoid having the step 
bottom out on ramps and rough terrain. The self-propelled option has a whisper quiet electric drive with a variable speed throttle which drives the lift at walking speeds or at a very slow speed when near furniture and stone fronts. If the platform on a self-propelled lift is elevated approximately one foot, the drive system will be disabled. The self-propelled lift cannot be towed without a separate cart or trailer. Self-propelled lifts can be manually moved by disengaging the parking brake or by the brake release button at the end of the tiller controls. Drive function is disabled when the parking brake is disengaged. The self-propelled option has the ability to climb, stop, and hold and descend ramps. Steep ramps may require assistance to climb. Operators should always remain uphill of the lift when traversing ramps. The lift should be kept in a clean and dry storage area with the key removed. The battery operated lifts come equipped with the new smart automatic chargers. They are designed to be plugged in after use. When the charger output is maxed, the indicator light is red. When the battery is fully charged, the charger will shut down and a green light appears. Each time the lift is used, it is important to follow the pre-start inspection procedure. Always extend and lower outriggers and install maintenance lock pins before servicing a lift with an elevated platform. The tiller steering and the rear wheels of the manually propelled lifts should be greased periodically. Two fasteners are rotated counterclockwise to remove the cabinets. Clips on the covers fit over the lip of the bottom of the cabinet. Fasteners on the top of the cover fit over the vertical portion of the cabinet and the fasteners are rotated clockwise to secure the cover. Cabinet covers should never be stepped on. It could short the batteries and damage circuitry. There is a LED bulb on the motor controller for self-propelled lifts which flash a code if the drive circuit is not working properly. Troubleshooting battery problems include checking the fuse on the charger, also checking fluid levels periodically to make sure that they are maintained. Reduced fluid levels will not permit the batteries to hold a full charge. Turn off key and remove the ground or black cable before making repairs. Rotate key to turn on machine. Select between base or remote controls. The lift will not operate for a few seconds until the PLC status lights turn on. To drive, all eight outrigger input lights need to be out. The unit elevated input light needs to be on. To elevate the lift, all four outrigger down lights need to be on. If a step is on a given side, that outrigger out light needs to be on. Each of the outriggers, step position, and lift elevated sensors have status lights as well. The battery switch disconnects the battery from all control functions. Rotate clockwise to the on position. For more information, call Forston and Associates at 1-262-338-6000 or reach us online at sales at forston.com.